ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mangs. I'm the Mequa. It's time to start with part three. The longest part ever. I think we get a little bit of a, yeah, we get a bit of an intro here. Intersecting wows. Wow. It's cinematics. Oh wait, we already did the cinematics. Ago, yeah. Crimea freed itself from day and tyranny. Its nobles used that freedom to berate the queen and scrabble for power. Disgusted with their greed Disgusting. and Disgusting! I can the Grail mercenaries left the court behind and returned to work. Thanks to their efforts and to Queen Alincia's even-handed rule, Crimea has avoided a bloody civil war. Before departing the capital once again, Ike receives disquieting news from Queen Alincia. I read that as the disgusting. Black Knight, the man <laughs> who murdered Ike's father, has once again been seen in Dayan. The Queen's words hang heavy over Ike as he leads the mercenary group. Back Why? You to never Empire. killed him. Remember, you ran oh. away. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But the fort fell on top of him, so he still died store wise. Yeah, but I think Ike knew he could teleport around, right? I guess. I think so. Oh, Maybe he saw him being crushed by boulders. We get another one? Oh, yeah, we do. Returns yeah. in the company oh, of I gotta the turn the sound up. Nyla and the mage Tormod to tell a uh. dire tale. The shocking story he relates ignites a terrible fury in the hearts of the Light. Oh, Lords. right, I remember. The assassination of the previous Benyon Apostle sparked the massacre of the Heron clan, as well as the burning of their home, the Serenus Forest. Wah -wah. That murder and the resulting catastrophes were long thought to be the work of Dayan's former ruler, the Mad King Ashnard. Now, however, Prince Raphael, a survivor of the massacre, reveals that those directly responsible were none other than the senators <gasps> of Benyon. Darn, darn, darn! <laughs> Who had thought that the evil nobles were evil? Upon hearing this tale, the heart king to Barn is consumed with an ice. I love how we rage. both had the same thought at the same time. He shares this information with the Raven King, Nisala, and the Beast King, Kanagus, and they form a Laguz alliance. Together with the Heron royal family, they send messengers to the leadership of Benyon, demanding an explanation from the senators. Benyon rebuffs their requests, no, nope. however, denying any wrongdoing and refusing to investigate Raphael's claims. Is there nothing to see here, me here? <laughs> their decision to silence the Laguz inquiries. The Empire goes so far as to murder an alliance. This was a message from Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lord X. <laughs> the alliance into declaring war upon the Benyon Empire. Galia's sub commander, Ranulf, considers the so long. <laughs> attempting to simply overpower Benyon. He recognizes, however, that pitting brute force against Benyon's magic and tactical prowess will result in massive alliance casualties. He decides to enlist the strength and knowledge of his old wartime ally, Ike, and the Grail mercenaries. Ike is an acquaintance of Benyon's apostle, however, and is at first reluctant to become involved in the conflict. You know, this is yeah. long with the when music loops. <laughs> the senator's cold-blooded murder of the Alliance messenger. He can feel the anger that burns in the Laguz's hearts. You know, this is already told in the part to before this, so it's pretty nonsensical to pursue it. Yeah. He agrees to help the Laguz Alliance. <sighs> there we go. All right, we got like five minutes left to play the game. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Prologue. The great Game Boy Advance. <laughs> oh, the Game Boy Advance was pretty great, though. This is, I love this music, though. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. In general, this part is pretty funny because there's like Soren and Skrimir trash talking each other. <laughs> Skrimir's like me, he's like, fuck strategy! <laughs> <laughs> Literally! We rely on luck. They're in a fort, why are they not coming out to fight us? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's great. Alright, so, um, oh wow. A bunch of conversations that give you nothing, yet I have to click them all because of my OCD. But if you have a safe state, why are you. 
freaking hell. I mean, I know you don't have a save state this time, but usually you do have a save state after this, so why are you even clicking them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, we got like a million units to talk about, so me and Mecha, we agreed on something beforehand. I quit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that. <laughs> the other thing. Yeah, we... <laughs> We agreed we should, since there's like three chapters ahead where we basically get no new units, we're going to split these up into four. So how we're going to do it? Four? Uh, three, I mean. Sorry. My math is off. <laughs> math. <laughs> so we're going to do like Ike, Titania, Soren, Mist on the first. Then we're going to do Rolf, Void, Oscar, Shinon on the second. Then we're going to do Gatry, Riss, and Mia on the third. So just, you know, just so we don't have a 30 minutes of me and Mecha talking and then no gameplay. Although... Yeah, who would want to listen to us talking anyway? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not like the one hour re unit review compilation is one of the most watched uh, videos on my channel, I mean. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's talk about this guy first. Ike! Uh, Ike uh, is pretty fucking good. Uh, the end. Let's uh, move on to Titania. Titania is... <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could do all of them if we're just gonna do it like that. <laughs> Probably. So uh, yeah, enter Ike. Ike's got some transfers and some pretty good ones as well. So, in Path of Radiance, our Ike capped Speed and Defense. Speed is ridiculously good for Ike because it makes him start with 25 Speed, which is enough to double most enemies, I think, at the beginning. And then, due to his... I mean, he's not super fast. He's got a 35% Speed growth, but still, that 2 extra Speed really reaches a lot of important thresholds with Ike. Makes it a lot easier for him to just get kills overall and just get, get him a lot of experience so that he keeps snowballing out of control. Uh, he's ridiculously strong in this game. I mean, look at those stats. They're really good. 24 strength, 23 defense, too. I mean, uh, he's got a defense transfer, of course, but it's not like the original Ike isn't uh, tanky without without it, but with it, he's, like, basically more tanky than most armor knights and generals. Uh, he is locked to swords, which kind of sucks, but uh, you do have wind swords, so it's not a big deal in Radiant Dawn as it is in other games. And he also comes with his personal weapon, the Etard, which I always... Always think sounds so funny. It's basically a silver sword with a bit of crit on it. Uh, it's got a million different bone supports. Uh, Earth of uh, Earth affinity, which is the best affinity in the game. You saw how powerful uh, Oscar Kieran was. Even that, and that wasn't even double Earth. That was Earth Fire, or sorry, Earth Wind, and that was still pretty goddamn amazing. Um, I just think uh, Ike is really good. I don't remember exactly when he gets this Ragnell. Is it three eleven? Three eleven, yes. Yeah, three eleven. So. He, d he gets it eventually, when he gets it, he becomes ridiculously strong, but even before then, he's a really good unit. I rate him 4 out of 5 stars. It's a really solid unit overall. Cool. Yeah, Ike is, like, probably the best, like, core combat unit in the game, like, for a unit that only has combat, he's ridiculously good at it, especially with the speed transfer. His base is 23, normally isn't even that bad, he doubles, like, half the things. I've been playing some Radiant Dawn to re refresh myself in hard mode, and I doubles like half the things I put him against. It's like a 50-50 shot, basically. Yeah. But if he gets some speed procs or the speed transfer, he's pretty much fine for the rest of the game. Pretty good in that regard. Strength is ridiculous. Uh, Etard has like five, 50 uses, and then in 3-4 you can find another one, so you have 100 Etard uses. Yeah. And I never even run out the first one. <laughs> like, I usually don't bother finding the second one, because <laughs> you, you don't need it. And like, the other thing about Ike that I think is important to mention is he doesn't promote until part 4, whereas everyone else can promote when he hit level 20. So again, more promotions being kind of delayed does kind of suck, because that means no access to third tier goodness, like the... Oh, yeah. Like the extra skill capacity and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he also gets Nihil automatically on proper promotion, but it does cost him capacity, so it's not really a huge benefit to him. Earth Affinity, like I said, is good. Uh, there was one more thing. He does actually get access when he promotes to a hero in this game. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. It's that's very useful, I find, because at that time, I, at that point, he has the wreck now, and the biggest reason to get access, to, like, want to use access, is either weapon triangle, which doesn't exist, or want to range with hand axes, which doesn't really matter when you have the wreck now. Um, there was one more important thing I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, I'm going to rate him five stars. That was the important thing. What? Because... You know, I, I like looking back at the units I've been rating four stars and some of the units I plan to rate four stars, I feel like Ike really is a cut above them. So I think he's worth giving five stars to. Uh, I definitely think he's better than, like, well, like I said, some of the units I'm giving four stars to. So I wanted to make a difference there. I feel like I, I'm not going to rate that many units five stars. I think I rated Har, Jill, and Raphael five stars. That's pretty much it. I feel like Ike belongs up there. He is, I think, worse than Jill and Har. But I think you could argue he's better than Raphael pretty easily. So he's just, he's available so much and he's so good at everything. Like the only thing I can really blame him for is not flying and not promoting earlier. But 
that's fine. Also, you fight him at some point, so it's kind of scary to raise him <laughs> and, and then have to fight him. But there's a trick around that, which I'll I'll get into when that part comes. It's I I think yeah. I heard that you can put him to sleep, but the problem is we're not going to get the sleep staff because we lost Aaron. Yeah, <laughs> rip Aaron. <laughs> so in a, way, in a way, I guess you could say Aaron contributes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron contributes to making chapters harder. Yeah. <laughs> So, um... Yeah, five stars. I think this might be the first time you have ever rated a unit higher than me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. You tend to either rate the same or below me. You're yeah. a lot more stingy with your ratings. Likely, yes. Well, I think uh, Ike is good enough for it. This game is weird. I will say that one thing that makes Ike very important is that you have to kill the final boss with him, and he also needs to fight um, the other boss. He's like the only guy that can yeah. fight one of the other bosses. Yeah. And there is something funny you can do, like if you have a hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is true that raising him makes it a lot easier, yeah, because on 0% growth, it is definitely a bit annoying to have to like save stack boosters for that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's not like it's a detriment to train Ike. He's super good. Yeah. But it's, it's one of the few occasions where, like, I feel like using your lord is like advisable to people instead of oh, yeah. like people like Lin and Elliwood and like uh, you can train him but whatever or Roy it's like whatever it doesn't really matter but for Ike it's definitely easier to just train him. Yeah, so this basically happens automatically. He's also really close to capping a lot of his stats. Yeah, I was just about to mention that bonus experience on him also works really well for his speed especially. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um... Let's go over to Titania! Yes, she's alive! She's alive! I mean, she's she, they found her bird in a pitfall somewhere. And <laughs> she just came out I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. You think I can die? No way. Um, Titania is, in this game is still ridiculously good. I, She's not the god she was in Path of Radiance because you don't get her as early. But she's still a very good unit in her own right. Although, she is more closely followed by Oscar and Kieran and the other uh, knights in this game, so she doesn't stand out the way she did in Path of Radiance. Still, take nothing away from her, though. Good base strength, she's pretty fast, although enemies do scale really fast in this game, and even though she has a 50% speed growth, it's not a given that Titania will double everything if you don't uh, put a lot of effort into her. Still, she's overall a really well-balanced uh, uh, horse units. I mean, all of her stats are really good, even her rests which is her lowest stat, is still pretty good. Um, her, her hit points is like the only thing about her that's a little bit low compared to the, some of your other units. She only has 36, but this is more than made up for with her good avoidance and good defenses. And she's also locked to the best weapon type, which is amazing. Comes with S rank and axes. She can use the steel pole axe without any speed penalty. And her skill is generally high enough so that she can hit pretty reliably with it. Um, she has the sheep. I gotta check her affinity really quickly because I'm I might have light, read I think it's like yeah I I my notes said earth I knew that was wrong so I'm gonna correct <laughs> that I was like, she supports I, with earth people in Path of Radiance yeah <laughs> so it's almost like she has earth affinity yeah so light affinity isn't the greatest but I mean honestly who cares Titania is still pretty good I will give her four out of four out of five stars though I don't think she quite qualifies for the five star rating in this game because she's more like on par with the rest of your units but she's a really strong four star unit. Cool. I, I like her a lot. I mean, being mounted, as I said in part two, it's not the best thing ever in this game. It's all right for Titania. Part three is fairly mount friendly, but there are some maps where it holds her back a little bit. Uh, there are some maps with like Letkus, where at some point you just cannot advance anymore. Uh, there's a swamp map, but that doesn't really matter too much. But overall, the, the move benefit is really nice for Titania. Weapon type is nice. The speed at only 21 is actually pretty shaky for this part of the game. I remember looking at enemies, they have around 18, 19, sometimes even 20 speed. So it's pretty tough for Titania to start doubling. So I, she's actually a pretty good candidate for speed wings. If you have them, you can either transfer them over from part two, or I think you find a pair somewhere in this part, or you can tra even transfer the ones from part one. Because <laughs> there's no real good target for it in part one, I think, for the speed wings to get an end game. So what you can do there is like, you deploy Iliana in end game to give her the speed wings just before the part one ends. And you oh, transfer them to the that's pretty scenarios. smart, actually. <laughs> but you have to deploy Iliana, which kind of sucks, because you just lost her tight. But yucky. anyway, Speed wings are not that Tainas is pretty good. Um, she has some durability issues, but you can help them pretty easily. A uh, good candidate for an angelic rope you get in 3-1. Um, she can get some boost from transfer. She can get an earth support pretty easily from Oscar or Ike. Uh, she gets soul, the best mastery in this game, which, uh, you know, it actually procs in this game when you have a blood half out speed. <laughs> I mean, it procced a lot in Path of Radiance, too. It just never procced when we needed it. It's, I mean, it's, it's really good, because every mastery basically says, kill the enemy, but Soul also says, heal myself while I'm killing the enemy. So yeah. that's why it's the best mastery. So that's it's, why I like it. It's and really good. I, there's also a really good trick with Tatina that you can do when supporting her with someone. You can give her Savior, 
and then have her rescue some dumb unit. I like to use Mist for this. Uh, she has the water, water affinity. And I believe Light gives like defense at least, so that means she gets full defense from Mist and then some attack as well, which is pretty good. Gives defense on accuracy. Too. Yeah, so that's pretty nice for her. Accuracy also doesn't hurt because uh, axes sometimes can be a bit. Yeah, pole axes are inaccurate, yeah. so that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, so a um, bit of a weird streak here, but I'm also going to give Titania five stars. Oh, wow. I, don't she, I don't think she really has major enough flaws to make her four stars. I don't think there's anything wrong with her. She's even mounted. She can't fly, but again, what wow. else is wrong with this unit? She's ridiculously good. Wow, holy shit. Wow, that's uh, Mecha's being generous with the stars today. This is I mean, part three units are just easier to be good, I guess. I mean, part three is like a lot more relaxed. Part one is like, it's very strict on how good a unit can be because you get so many broken units. It's like, yeah, no one it's... really stands out besides Jill, whereas in this part, it's more... <laughs> It's yeah. more a little bit. It's more even. It's more like Path of Radiance. You yeah, know? you get a lot of good units. This is true. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Don't worry. I think I'm about done with the five stars for this one. Though. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Hi, Soren. Hey, this guy's alive. <laughs> <laughs> He's also alive. Oh, Soren. Oh, Soren. Oh, Soren. So, um, if uh, if our Soren had stayed alive through Clash, he would have gotten plus two skill. Yes. <laughs> Would have helped him. I think he would have capped it actually, because I think his skill cap is 23. Um, I, I I don't think Soranus is as good in Radiant Dawn as he was in uh, Path of Radiance. Uh, oh, I think no. I think I think uh, Path of uh, Radiant Dawn Soran has one huge flaw, and that's his speed. He has 18 speed, which sounds good on paper, but the enemies in Part Three are pretty fast. And for some reason, Soran's speed growth is 35%, which I just ah, it's so low. Um, if you can give him a speed transfer, I think that's going to help him out a lot. And that's also pretty one of the easiest transfers to actually give him in Path of Radiance, because he's very likely to cap speed. I find find it difficult to double with Soren. That's my yeah. experience with him, that he just never doubles. He does have Adept, but he procs on speed in Radiant Dawn as opposed to skill in Path of Radiance. I would have preferred if he procced on skill here too, because he has a lot more skill, and he has a 60% skill growth. For that reason alone, I like to take uh, Vantage off him and give it to Mia or someone else who can use it better. <laughs> you mean take Adept off him? Adept, right? sorry, yeah. Take Adept off him and give it to Mia, who can like benefit a lot more from it. And then just use... I mean, he can't even use Stays in his Tier 2 form, which is really fucking annoying. He forgot how to use him. Yeah, at least if he could, could use Stays. <laughs> yeah, just like fucking Mist forgot how to ride a horse. Soren just forgot how to, to wield a staff, which is really annoying. I also find his survivability to be really poor. 28 hit points, 9 defense is really bad. And some of the enemies will even start doubling him if you don't train him properly. So, yeah, just a really difficult unit to use. He does get good if you get him to Archsage tier, but I think everyone gets good when they become an Archsage. I don't think this is a good argument in favor of Soren. I like his. Uh, I like supporting him, him up with Ike, though. They have a nice bond support with each other, and Dark Earth is pretty good for giving both of them a nice boost to their survivability. But I just, I think Soren's a far cry from what he was. I'm still giving him 3 out of 5, but I think it's it's a 3 stars he has to work really hard to get, and honestly, he's not as good as he was in Path of Radi Radiance. Path of Radiance. Path of, uh, path, <laughs> path of Radiance. Path of Radiance, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish Soren was as good as he was back then, but as he is right now, he's just too slow to double, and he's never going to be really durable, unless you support him with Ike, which... Doesn't really benefit Ike because Ike doesn't need any kind of buff to anything. He would no. probably prefer having an attack affinity, which is why I like to support him with Mia instead. But more on that later, I guess. I mean, I guess he does get damage from Soren's Dark, though. Uh, that's true, I guess, actually. Only three, but still. Something. Yeah, but that should be the same as Mia, so whatever. It doesn't really matter much. But, um, yeah, all right. I remember now. I wanted him to have a hit with a fire affinity as well because he has to hit all his bosses yeah. and stuff. So that's why I was liking with Mia. All right, so. But still, it's like it's an okay support, I guess. But Soren has lower move than Ike, and Ike likes to be like exposed to a bunch of enemies, and Soren doesn't like to be exposed to a lot of enemies. So it's still kind of awkward, despite yeah. the fact that their movement is very similar. But yeah, Soren doesn't double anything. It does help that he can attack a one-two range, and he hits an enemy resistance, which I mean, it's higher in this game than it is in most games, but it's still the lower of the two defensive stat of most enemies. So that helps a little bit, but just not doubling and not surviving doesn't really help your cause. Really wish he had a speed transfer of some kind, but he just doesn't. And his HP is so low. It's like, and yeah, if you, if you do transfer a skill, I looked it up, and his skill cap is 23. So he can bonus experience pretty well. The bonus experience is pretty scarce in in hard mode, or as you'd like to call it, maniac it's mode. It's non-existent. So. I mean, I got... Yeah, I got it, it's a little bit better in this part, though, than in uh, part one. So yeah. that helps. But you had, like, the huge dump from part two, and it was worth, like, three levels. Three levels on Heather! <laughs> so 
<laughs> that shows how rare bonus experience is, and he has to work a little bit to like make it worth it. Too. So like, yeah, yeah, uh, it's like it's like a reluctant three star for me too. Like, I, I don't think I can rate him two stars because that's like that makes him sound bad. Where Soren is just not worth it, but still like usable, I guess. And yeah, three stars. He is an average unit surrounded by good units. I mean, he's surrounded by we we just rated two really good units, so I can't fault Soren for being worse than that. But there there are better mediocre units than him too. Yeah, true. All right, and then we'll rate our last unit of the day. Uh, mists. Oh, oh God, <laughs> why is she still tier one? <laughs> mists. <laughs> you know, you know why she's called Mists. And that's what she turns into when an enemy attacks her. <laughs> she missed her horse. <laughs> <laughs> I like my explanation better. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? You know, I just want to say we just said Soren was slow. <laughs> He's almost oh, done. Oh my missed. <laughs> god, what a fucking awful unit this is. Now, a lot of people point out something that, oh, oh if Florette worked as intended and did magic damage, Mist would be good. No, she would not be good, okay? Yes, okay, if Florette dealt magic damage as it was supposed to, she would deal marginally more damage, but she would still suck, right? Yeah, hey, she would deal like five more damage. That's not irrelevant or anything. Maybe not, but it's... Plus the defense res gap is big too. Well, not big. This is true, but I mean, why couldn't they just have given Mist a horse from the get-go? <laughs> like, you, you spend so much time racing Mist up from a fucking awful footlocked unit, and then she finally gets her horse and become awesome, and then you come to Radiant Dawn and she fucking walks again! Why?! <laughs> I think they know most people don't train this to Path of Radiant, so Probably. they just leave her <laughs> So she's just, like, a bad cleric, and there's... Uh, yeah, sure, when she gets her horse eventually, I mean, she she get a healer with Kanto, which is sort of nice, but goddamn it, 19 levels to get her there? I mean, I guess you can... Like, you can give her, like, a Master Crown or something? You want, but oh, yeah, you know what the problem with that is? What? She she has a personal promotion item that you get in part. Oh, four, right? that's right. Now I remember. You said this in Path of Radiance, but then you remembered it was a Radiant Dawn thing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, ugh, just ugh, oh, what a bad unit. I'm actually gonna give her one star because you get another healer that can heal better. So it's not like she's really and and also vulnerabilities and concoctions are awesome in this game. So you don't really need mist, honestly. You can just undeploy her and use items. Cause you know what? A concoction of Vulnerary doesn't fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> Vulnerary dies in eight, hit, 8 hits in this game, which is, you know, 7 more than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Vulnerary doesn't get fucking doubled by everything either. That would be nice though if you could double the Vulnerary. You get double the hit points back. So yeah, bad unit. What do you have to say about Mist? Uh, I really wish her stats were better, but she dies to just everything like enemies are able to double her uh they can't they can't want to kill her quite yet but they stay like they're closer than i would like which sucks also when you heal in this game a reminder that you equip a staff instead of the florette so yeah she's even a bigger target she does zero damage and then just straight up dies or something for it it would be a really good weapon if it was magical i think but it, it isn't and we have to live with that we can't change it i mean someone offered to change it but we yeah i do not so... want it to but i i thought that was scummy <laughs> yeah let's not I mean, yeah, it, it sucks. It, it really sucks that she doesn't have a horse. I will say, uh, against the other healer, uh, I'm sure he has more magic, he heals more, and he has a better weapon type, sure. But at the same time, uh, that guy is even slower, dies even more easily. For that reason, I think his luck is also lower, and he has one less move at first, so there are reasons to use Mist. Oh yeah, not that many. I don't think he, I think he can use physics though. We're talking about yeah. She does force. have seven move to her credit, but still. Yeah, which is which is okay, but she can't really move that far generally because she dies to everything. So yeah, it's yeah. it's questionable how much of an advantage that is. I will say though, I reserve one star for units that are so ungodly bad that you can really use them for anything without really hurting yourself. And I think healing is like not that bad, even for a unit with her stats. Mm. It's still sort of okay. Plus, she has that thing where she has a water affinity, uh, which Titania can make use of really well, actually. Uh, I yeah. use Mist for that purpose more often than I use her for actual healing fun facts. And <laughs> so, for that reason, I will give Mist two stars. I think she is a tier above someone like Fiona, Meg, um, who else is really failure? Fika, I guess. <laughs> uh, some part four scrubs that I'm forgetting, probably. Why are there so, so many I, bad female characters in Radiant Dawn? I know. <laughs> Sexist <laughs> game. The game is so sexy. Yeah, so, <laughs> I don't know. I don't mind uh, Miss as much as you do, but she is really bad at... Like, You're not the one bad. who has to use her right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, also, like, in your early maps, you don't really have a choice. You kind of have to use her. And yeah. Other course on the map, so you have to use her. But more like, yeah, the, the map objective is, like, kind of balanced around having to use all the Grim Mercenaries, which I think is a very fun part of the game, so we should get into that. Yeah, yeah, I'm so glad we didn't spend an entire episode talking about you yeah, and me like too. five minutes of gameplay. <laughs> it's, I blame the narration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the narration was like fucking six minutes. All right, I'm gonna make a save state here because sometimes Skrimir will break the emulator. <laughs> oh god, he does. He uh, when he yeah. transforms, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can't skip this scene for some reason. And okay, let's see if my computer can handle it. Yep, I can. So okay. Laggy. Yeah, it's uh, that if you don't have a strong computer, he will just crash your emulator when he does that because there's too Skrimir's many like so goose. <laughs> Skrimir is really strong. All right. Or so dumb. Yeah, or <laughs> your computer can't handle your dumbness. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> your dumbness. He's really dumb. He's a good unit, though. Uh, he's, uh... Unfortunately, he, he likes to target the wrong person. So. <laughs> he comes with provoke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, welcome to the prologue of chapter three. So, on one side, Part you got three. You got Lagoose who will do stupid shit, and then you got y your units who will also do stupid shit. <laughs> <So> uh, <laughs> Put the units on the, on the blue direct thing and watch them fight it out. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. end the turn like five times. <laughs> Let's go! Right, what, what does rally mean? Uh, I think... I don't know. What? <laughs> I'm scared. I don't know, what does that it's mean? I think, I, I think yeah. that it's like gather around Ike, anyway. Oh yeah, it probably is. I don't think you can ask. Yeah, I don't think you can command your own units to charge. I don't see a, an option at the very least. You can do avoid, halt, target. Oh. I can't. I can't ask them to. Maybe this is a hard mode thing. I don't know. Mm, um, I do. I do remember my Makalov moving automatically. Maybe it's a hard mode thing. I don't know. I was playing on hard mode. Oh, interesting. So, um, yeah, uh, this uh, the bonus experience for this chapter is uh, seven turns, actually, so it's really, really steep. Uh, and also, you, if you keep the green units alive, you also get bonus experience. This is You have very little control over this, other than just playing fast and try to get to the boss before they get to the boss. Because there are, I think there's some fire mages ahead. There's some ballistas you can try to pick them out with, but ballistas are so weak in this game. Uh, so yeah, I, if I remember correctly, uh, oh, I forgot to put Adept on Nia. Oh well, I guess Soren will will use it for now. I think you want to like scout with your weak units. <laughs> this is you're joking, right? But I actually usually move someone like Mist first because I'm not gonna attack with her. You know what? That's yeah, okay. just not too far into the fog because there are enemies. In the fog, I'll put so. her in the bush. So yeah, maybe. it's kind of hard to shield them because the terrain costs you movements, but they can yeah. still move through that mist. This is true. I guess we can see if Chatania doubles. Uh, no, like the only person who will double is like Mia and Ike and Shinon. Yeah. Like, most of these enemies. Yeah. Everyone else is too slow. Unroll. <laughs> You're still no. too slow. You're, You're still, still too slow. slow. Yeah. yeah. I guess our, our our Ike probably one runs this guy. Yeah, he does. Uh, oh, this is the first time we're using units without you know reviewing them beforehand, which is kind of weird. But we kind of have to. Like <laughs> we spend like 60 minutes talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> probably. There you go, you got your animations, guys. You can stop complaining now. Yeah. You can and complain about other things now. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, honestly, I'm, I I think people are finally gonna be like, Oh, Mecha finally gave Grail mercenaries justice. Because uh, they, what they're complaining about is the fact that you're too harsh on your rating and that you talk too much about speedruns. Hmm. Like, oh, Mecha only cares about speedruns, guys. Well, if I rate units based on, like, going slow... We get like negative growth, uh, Nino shenanigans in here. Ah, yeah, you don't have to tell me. I agree with you, but a lot of people are like, Mecca, so elitist. Mecca only care about the speed run. Well, Mecha. what stat has you want me to use that? I'm not gonna rate them based on their end game potential. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> Fiona is really good. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you gave Fiona two stars, didn't you? <laughs> I did actually, and I got made fun of for that. Let me tell you that. A lot of people made fun of me for that. There were people like commenting like, oh my god, Mecha's so biased for mounted units, and he gave Alincia too low of a rating. And I was like, huh? Okay. Get, get in line, Rolf. Let's see. I actually do not... Oh, wait, we don't get a wind edge on this level? Really? No. Oh. You don't need one, really. It's too weak anyway. Mia's going to be really bad against the general, so is Oscar. Most people are bad against generals, actually. Because, like, yeah. your axe units don't double them. They're actually kind of fast. 
Yeah, if, if our Oscar got a speed transfer, he'd have kept almost now almost kept speed. I think. Oh yeah, it was really close, wasn't he? he? He had he kept speed. It was the only stat he kept. Oh, he died. Right, right. He right, died right, to right. yeah. He died to the Swordmaster oh, with the Astra. Rip. Oh, Sword Master, I guess he kept like everything. Yeah. Uh, he here no actually yeah there was one run in Clash where he kept four stats and yeah, then and then, reset. <laughs> then we had to oh hi there boy. Yeah. Then we yeah. had to reset, and then he capped uh, just mm -hmm. speed, sadly. I don't remember why we reset. I think we lost Ike? I don't remember. Lost something. Yeah. <laughs> I know you lost your Ashura staff. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my sanity, too. <laughs> okay, let's see what Skirmir does. Okay, yeah, let me just kill this unit that's already weakened. <laughs> All the way in the back, thanks. Yeah. Did you mention that Skirmir has to arrive for the chapter to end? You can't just see Oh, that. fuck. I completely forgot about that. So, yeah, yeah it depends on Skirmir, which is yeah. never a good thing. Yeah, so there's like two paths that go to the to the seas area basically, uh, but they don't intersect until quite a long way in. So these like goose are pretty much on their own, and you're pretty much on your own. But you still have to hurry up to the intersection so you can help the lagoos clear out the last bit of the map because they suck at it and they start untransforming and everything. They really and do. There's, it's there's a couple of blockades in the paths uh, that the goose gets stuck on, and you can help them out a little bit by sniping with the ballistas. Which you said they're weak. They are a little bit, but they have a bit of a crit rate. So if you get lucky, you can still clear the way in some way. You can, I think, if you're smart, you can manipulate bond supports to give the sniper, like... I think Shinon has a bond support with Gatry.